Hello, welcome back to the channel, welcome back to the G87. The reason that we're in this weird shed today is because I've just had the car ceramicked and this was the best place to leave it while it was getting all dried up. Uh, it needs to have about two days for the paintwork to just properly cure correctly with the new G-Technic ceramic process on. So we're just leaving it in here. Now over the past few months on YouTube, you've probably seen all and sundry waxing lyrical about how good the G87 is. I'm gonna tell you as an owner, a few things that I don't like about this car. We'll have five things. And also I've got one other mod, which I'll leave till the end of the video as a nice little Brucey bonus for you. So uh, yeah, keep watching to find out what the things that I don't like about this car are. Now the first few things that I don't like about this car are inside the car. So it's gonna be with the software here and uh, a few other things. So let's get stuck into that. And I'm going to show you the first thing that really, really gets on my nerves so much about this car. Right, so the first things first is every time you start this car, you have something called lane departure warning. And what that does is it shakes all the steering wheel backwards and forwards and steers the car for you, essentially, if you go anywhere near the white line in the middle of a road. You have to turn that off every single time you start the car. And to do that, you have to go into somewhere in the settings menu uh, and fiddle around time after time after time. I can't even remember where it is because what I've done is I've set it to a shortcut. And there we go, we can turn it off just like that, there. Uh, and then that is off and then you see there's that little greyed out car driving into some white lines there. That means it's off. Now you would think that that's not such a bad issue, however, you can only set these shortcuts up with an account being coded to a key. And so if you start the car with the wrong key, take the wrong one out of the box at home or whatever, just get in the car with, the diff with your wife's key or whatever, you go to the drop down, there are no shortcuts. So then you have to go back into the system and you've got two options. You can either go and find where all of the lane departure things and whatever they are, I can't even remember where they are now, or you can switch accounts. Okay, not a problem, you say. Let's switch accounts. So you go up here, you click accounts, up here, manage BMW IDs. You can only change accounts with the car stopped. So if you get in the car, start driving around, put your music on, whatever, go, oh no, I haven't forgot, I've forgotten to turn off the lane departure warning. Let's just do that now. Oh no, the shortcut's gone. Oh, I've got to change account. I go to change account, it will tell you here that you can only switch account with the car stopped. And then you still have to put in your key code to get to switch the account. So it's an absolute rigmarole to change uh, accounts and then therefore turn off lane departure warning and also the, the, speed, the speed limit warning in this car. It is an absolute pain in the arse turning off these things in this car every time you start it. It really, it really starts to wear thin. So I have to remember to take the exact right key every single time. Uh, and yeah, hopefully, uh, <laughs> and then I still have to turn it off uh, when I'm in the car. So yeah, bit annoying. Number two of the things that I don't like about this car, you tell me on there where you can see how many miles the car has done. It's not there. It's not available as a function. That one down in the bottom left, that's the mileage remaining uh, in the tank. So I've got 60 miles left before I have to fill up. You cannot see on this car without it, without being stopped how much mileage this thing has done. It only shows up when you stop. There you go, just over 700 miles. And that, again, is bloody annoying. I keep having to check the mileage because I've got my running in service coming up at 1200 miles. I'm like, oh, where is it? How many more miles is it? And every time I remember to do it, I'm driving the car. So I look down to see what mileage it is, and it doesn't exist. So I have to remember to do it when I stop the car, and then of course I was doing other things when I stop the car and I get out and I forget, so yeah. The, guy, the, the one good thing is that you can check it in the BMW app, so I can just go on my phone and see wherever it is. Okay, number three of the things that I don't like on this car is the interior door cards. I quite like these bits because they glow and they pulse at night with the door open and stuff, but I really don't like the edge here. I mean, that looks Fisher-Price, let's be honest. I mean, what the hell is that? It's plasticky. Um, I mean, it might be a bit of rub. No, it's not. It's plasticky like in the F87 and it's just like, I mean, why bother? They should just make them like the rest of the car is on the inside and make it just like an M4. I mean, the M4 door cards are much, much better than this. So yeah, poor show. The 
The other thing I don't like about this car is the choice of wheels from factory. I think these are probably the best options that you can get, 19 and 20 inch staggered. Um, but without paying significantly more for the CS frozen wheels, I think that you know the wheel choice is actually subpar. Um, yeah. What do you think? Okay, and the last thing that I don't like about this car is here under the engine bay. Now, remember, I've got the F87 M2 comp as well, and so I was really disappointed when I looked under the engine compartment of the G87. Now, ignoring for a minute the carbon fibre engine bay cover, which was given to me by Infinity Design, big up, big up to those guys, um, is the strut brace on this car. Compared to the F87, which I'll overlay just right about now, Um, this thing just looks like a bit of scaffolding or something. It's terrible. There's a CSL version, um, which looks a little bit better. It's silver, and maybe I think it's made of aluminium or something. But I don't know, they've just dropped the ball on this one. It really doesn't look the part at all compared to the old one. But yeah, let's take a quick look at this carbon fibre engine bay cover. It really is nice. It has a bit of a, gives a bit of a glow up to the otherwise quite boring engine bay in here so there we have it that's what i don't like about the g87 is there anything else that you think that i should have mentioned on there that should be on the list is there anything that you think that i should have put on this list that didn't quite make it let me know down below in the comments and all i can say is like and subscribe i've got another video about the uh, g82 coming to this channel i'm going to compare that car with this car should you be driving the G87, should you be driving the G82 off the dealership forecourt, you will find out in that video, so subscribe for more. See you in the next one. Bye.